All right, so as promised, here is the video for making a um, movable door inside of Unreal. Uh, so I'm going to build this really fast um, <clears throat> without any of the assets. That way you can just look at it as plainly as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to content. I'm going to make a new folder. And that new folder is going to be called Blueprints. So this is where we're going to keep all of our blueprints that we make. So I'm going to go ahead and double click that. And then I'm going to go inside of it and I'm going to do, I'm going to right click and I'm going to click blueprint, blueprint class and choose that. And then what we want to do is we want to work with an actor. An actor is a placeable object that we can interact with, use trigger boxes, etc. So I'm going to click on actor and I'm going to call this um, slide door. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and double click that to take me inside the blueprint. So now we're inside the blueprint. Um, and now we have to actually go ahead and add the pieces. So I'm going to go back to content. I'm going to go to starter content and then architecture. I have some pieces that I'm going to use. I'm going to use this 400 by 400 piece. I'm going to drop it in. So that puts it down. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab this 400 by 400 wall and drop it in. But I'm going to scale it. Um, okay, so that should put it, that's fine, where it is. I'm going to change the color just so you can see a little different color. I had to get rid of the Z flicker. Oh, that has reflections on it. Okay. I don't want that. So we'll be going with the uh, brick that works. Okay. So I've got my I've got my wall here. Um, it's good to go. So what I need to do now is I need to add a trigger box. There's a couple things to keep in mind when adding a trigger box is that um, if we add it right now with this selected, it's going to attach it to that wall. So we actually want to put it on the door, um, the door frame, not the door. I'm going to actually rename this to door. I'm going to rename this to door frame. Door frame. There we go. So that selection, I'm going to go to add component. I'm going to type box. Box. I'm going to choose box collision. It's going to put it right there. So I'm going to go ahead and drag over. Go ahead and scale that up. So this is going to be what our player interacts with. So it's going to detect us when we step through it and then open the door. Okay, perfect. So we've got that. It's not connected to anything. It's going to move independently of everything else, um, which is exactly what we want. We do not want it hooked into the into the door. Otherwise, it's going to slide with the door and it'll give us some problems. So I'm going to go to my event graph. <clears throat> Inside my event graph, I'm going to go ahead and make that pretty large. And delete those. So I'm going to select my box. This is my box collision. I'm going to go ahead and right click, add event for box. I'm going to choose collision, on component begin overlap. So what I want this to do is I want this to move the door. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the door down so I have it. There it is. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off and I'm going to type move component two. So this is going to be my component. And this is how long it takes, where it says over time. So I'm going to have it take one second to actually do the whole thing. And now we need to actually give it a value. We need to raise the level of the door, so the height of the door. So to do that, we need to get a relative location of the door. So I'm just going to pull this off, get relative location. Then I'm going to pull off of that, and I'm going to hit the plus symbol on the keyboard, and then choose vector plus vector. Then I'm going to go ahead and connect that into target relative location. And then I'm going to add Z. So I'll tell it, I'm just having it move up. So I'm going to have it move up um, 150 units just to see. It may not be out of the way at 150, but we'll give it a shot. Okay, so once that's done, uh, we're just going to move the door. Now we're not done, right? Because we need it to come down. We need it to... Um, uh, reset itself and we don't want to keep triggering it over and over and over again. So the way we do that is we're going to add a couple of extra triggers in here 
um, to prevent that from happening. But let me go ahead and show you what it looks like right now, just so you can see um, what's happening. So we go to Blueprints, Slide Door, put it down, hit Play. Boop. It raises up. But if I keep hitting the box, it keeps raising up, right? Which we don't want. So we need to go ahead and tell it to make that trigger only happen one time. So I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to choose do. I'm going to type do, and you're going to see do once. So I'm going to pull that out. There we go. OK. And then what I need to do is I need to reset the trigger. But I also need to make the door come back down. OK, and obviously 150 wasn't enough, so 200. Um, but I need the door to come back down. So the easiest thing to do is just highlight all of this. So this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece. Leave begin overlap and leave do once alone. Hit Control W. That's going to give you a whole other set. I'm just going to slide that over. I make mine a little bigger because I don't need to work in the details panel. Okay. So then what I need to do is this is 200, so I'm going to do negative 200. So that's going to bring it back down. You can't just leave zero. If you do zero, it's going to add zero to it and nothing will happen. So you have to do a negative value of whatever you added there. Now, if I leave it just like this where it's completed to move, as soon as this is finished playing, it's going to shut the door. Shut it right back. So we need to add something that will slow that down. And that's going to be called a delay. So I'm going to pull off of this, type delay. Uh, I'll give it a delay of, let's see, let someone get through the door in two seconds. So it's going to wait two seconds, then play this. And I'm going to move this completed tag over there to reset. There it is. Go ahead and compile and save. And now let's see what happens. There it goes. And now I can step out and step in. But if I keep going in and out, it doesn't keep re-triggering it. So now it works just like we want it to. And that's it for doors. Well, that's it for using a base door. What we did on last Wednesday was the key-driven door. Um, and that's a little bit different.